Hey everyone, I'm back to talk about my favorite subject, Pinterest. I think by now most of us are familiar with Pinterest and we know how to pin, how to search, how to make boards. So let's go beyond and do a little bit of an advanced Pinterest to see what you can actually do with it in your classroom. When I introduce a lesson, such as MC Escher and Tessellations to my fifth graders, I go straight to my Pinterest board. On this board, I have numerous prints and artworks of Escher. I have videos, I have student artwork, uh, samples, pretty much everything you would need to bring out of the real file cabinet to teach the lesson. I also have a number of my former students' pieces, just mostly for myself because I want to have them in one place. I built my boards as a resource for other teachers. So my Escher Tessellations board actually has way more than I need or than you need. So I would not attempt to make it this large. I, if I was just doing this for my own personal lesson plan, I would have a smaller board of Escher Tessellations and use exactly the video that I would like to choose, uh, the samples that I would like to show the students, and just have it all in one little online file folder. But you really don't need this many items in each board. I use Pinterest every day in my classroom is to use the video clips to introduce the, introduce the elements and principles to my ELL students who sometimes don't speak English. So they're much more engaged, much more involved when we start out with singing a song about the topic. You can look around my classroom and literally see Pinterest everywhere. On this wall, I have posted some of my favorite quotes from Pinterest. Um, it happens to coordinate with the Calm Jar. The Calm Jar was the very first Pinterest project that I tried. And it's all over Pinterest in different formats, different, different recipes, but it works. So this is a matter of warm water, glitter glue, and maybe a little bit more glitter, put it in a bottle, the student comes over here, just needs to chill out for a few minutes, shakes the jar, watches it until the glitter goes to the bottom, and then they go back in. This one is timed for about five minutes, and truly, after watching that, they're calm, they're mesmerized, they're ready to go back to work. Another idea that is very popular on the site is using pizza boxes for faux canvases. I didn't have any pizza boxes, but I did have a lot of empty boxes. All you need really is a sturdy, narrow box in any size. I did a layer of paper mache on the, these boxes to make them stronger, then painted them in Roy G. Biv colors to reinforce the color wheel. The hardest part was have, getting them to stay on the wall. For that, industrial strength Velcro solved the problem. The large pencil in front of Create was also a Pinterest idea, so I created that one and then the other large pencil was gifted to me. I have six student tables in my classroom labeled by color. For many years, decades in fact, I had five of the colors in inflatable crayons. For some reason, Crayola doesn't make an orange. So the orange table always felt slighted. Well, on Pinterest, I found the directions and it inspired me to make that orange crayon. So here it is, everyone's happy. Another Pinterest idea on my tables is the mini trash can. Taught for years and never thought about this, but it solves all the kids jumping up and going to the trash can problem. They think it's cute, so they want to put their trash in there and it keeps it off the floor. 
So a lot of my classroom management strategies, of course, came from Pinterest. We use the Mona Lisa smile, uh, Mona Lisa quiet technique. I frequently say, less talk, more art, and the kids even say it to each other. And this format, I'm not sure who came up with it, but thank you because it works very well for many other occasions. And I have my expectations here and my jobs here. So all of us have the same problem of keeping pencils sharpened in our classroom. The kids want to jump up and down, make noise with the pencil sharpener, and there's really not a good solution until this. That was uh, early on one of my favorites from Pinterest. You keep one bucket of broken pencils, one bucket of sharp pencils. When the student has one at the table that needs to be sharpened, they simply quietly walk over here, put it in this basket, take another one, problem solved. Also, here's my marker grave. How many times do students tell you this marker doesn't work? This marker is dried out. So rather than having to answer that and tell them what to do, they simply bring the dead markers over to the marker grave. Solves the problem. From Pinterest, well, I would need a couple more hours to talk about all of them that I have tried. But these are some of the favorites and student favorites. Um, I have really tried a lot of collaborative projects from there. I think that's been uh, where I needed help the most. So my art club did these fabulous pour paintings and I have a board of pour paintings done professionally as well as done by students and uh, go to the board to see the directions. This is actually melted crayon. It was a, a throwaway piece of I don't know what sculpture and we melted crayons in a glue gun from Pinterest and formed this. We made another one that actually sold in an art gallery. These are simply crayon melts that we talked about space before doing them and after doing them to see how they could describe it in scientific terms. Very simple, very effective, very recyclable, and very colorful. So I hope this has helped to show you how I actually use Pinterest in my classroom daily, pretty much in every single class. If you teach another subject, it works just the same. If you teach science, math, you simply search for specific lessons, specific ideas on Pinterest, and they are there for you to find. So feel free to contact me. Good luck.